Hello and welcome to the English version of the FMC MCDU quick tutorial of the Airbus X Extended from Aerosoft. By popular demand, um, I'm starting this uh, tutorial in English now. I hope you can forgive me my accent as I'm not a native English speaker. So let's start right away. First of all, um, I placed the default Cessna on the uh, on my airport that's Vienna here and I then loaded the Airbus X extended so this gives you a powered up Airbus and I'm going to go into the cockpit now and you see engines are running everything is powered so in order for us to have a um, ha to, ha to start from scratch and to start uh, from the same setup you will go to the second uh, MCDU and you <coughs> you'll choose aircraft state and you'll choose the cold and dark state. Just click it and everything goes blank. So power is off. This is important because it, it gives us um, the chance to start from scratch and so that you can easily follow my, my steps. So next thing we'll do is we'll change to the overhead panel and um, either you can select the external power as I'm going to do now or you can start the APU and the batteries of course so you don't have to do much more I'll switch the engine uh, the fuel pumps on as well but you don't have to do that and you can even switch the <laughs> APU on so um, that you'll have power from that just need you just need power then we'll go to the pilots view and we'll switch on the displays you can do that with uh, those click spots here okay and then the e cams so switches are on. Next thing you'll have to do is you have to switch back to the overhead and switch the ADIRS to navigation. Just do it with a right click. And then we can finally go to the FMS. Just clear this message and click on init for initialization. Um, I'm going to do, uh, I'm just showing you a simple FMC setup so it gets you from A to B nothing fancy no holds uh, no direct twos no um, step climbs just plain A to B and today A to B is going to be Vienna to Zurich just because I know those airports uh, rather well so I'm going to type in Vienna is L O W W slash L S Z H for Zurich and I'm going to switch that here everything with a left click flight number you don't have to put in that one just go for 001 just a fantasy number cost index I'm going to use that from my virtual um, airline this is standard 35 and flight level will be 30,000 feet so just click that and next one is align IRS in the Airbus X extended this is in real time so you'll have to wait a few minutes till this is aligned so you will see when it's aligned when this countdown stopped and you will see the nav display come alive um, we'll switch to the next page with the right button and the block fuel you'll get that from um, the fuel planner from the Airbus X extended unfortunately I have uh, wait a minute I have to uh, check for that um, when you use the fuel planner you just go in into your window so you start the Airbus X fuel planner and then you just put everything as you want it and it gives you um, uh, block fuel to enter so I'm going to load the fuel and payload now and 9.4 is what I have to type in so you use the number from the fuel planner okay that's it we'll go back to <coughs> the flight plan and what you need to do now is you have to uh, select your route um, finding a route is simple just go on the uh, just go into your browser and go to uh, or just google for um, route planning tool or maybe you already have a route planning tool a good thing is VAT routes.net and there are a few tools out there that should give you an IFR route so I'm going to presume that you have uh, your Route already. I'm going to search mine uh, with uh, V root. Oh no, sorry. I'm sorry. V A T root. 
.NET and I'm just going to click in uh, the departure LOWW and the destination LSZH and then I can see my waypoints and first of all I'm going to uh, select LOWW here for the departure and I'm going to click on departure. Um, depending on the wind um, now there's there's no wind at all but I'm going to use uh, runway 16 or runway 16 I'm sorry and um, then it gives me a few options to choose from these are all standard instrument departures you can find those charts in the in internet as well just uh, google for them for example LOWW charts and you will find them so my first waypoint on this route uh, is Sydney and so I'm going to search for the standard instrument departure for Sydney and this is the Sydney 5B departure. I'm going to choose it and then I'm clicking on insert. This brings me back to the flight plan and I'm going for the last waypoint you can see here because then Zurich is already coming on top of the scent. So I'm clicking on this one and I'm clicking on airways. So the route planner should give you the airways and the waypoints. So now from Sydney I am using the airway UL856 until I reach the waypoint KPT, that's Kempton. I'm going to type that one in here. And then I'm continuing on the airway L856 to the waypoint Negra, which is the last waypoint before before Zurich. Type that in and type insert. So then I'm going down to the last waypoint and I'm clicking on Zurich and I'm clicking on arrival. So I'm going to presume the wind there, I'm not checking for it, I'm just choosing uh, something random and I'm using the ILS 3.4 and I'm, as my last waypoint is Negra I am choosing the Negra arrival and I'm typing on insert. Last thing to do is check the whole flight plan for flight plan discontinuities so you have to get rid of them because other then the otherwise the cal calculations won't work. So when you find a discontinuity, just click on clear and click on the flight plan discontinuity and it should be gone. Next thing to do is performance. Um, this is a bit uh, more complicated. You have to type in the transition altitude, uh, which I use 5000. I think in Europe it's uh, 7000, in USA it's 18000, but I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm just typing something in and the flex takeoff temperature that's uh, depends on the performance of the aircraft I'm typing in 54 degrees now and I'm using a flap setting of 2 so I'm typing 2 in here and up 0 0.8 that's the trim and then we'll have our V speeds here that's V1 we rotate V2 so then you can click through the other faces but that's just for checking and the approach you can already you can already type in data here for example 5000 feet transition altitude decision height 200 feet q and h let's presume it's 1018 i i think you can yeah you can already type it in and let's presume there's 10 degrees celsius in zurich and it's um for example oh no let's let's presume it's 340 degrees wind with 10 knots so we have the right runway selected okay that's pretty much it what you can do now is switch to the throttle quadrant and go for the trim so you can put this trim right that's 0 0.8 approximately and you can now see that the navigation display has become al has come alive and um, yeah it gives you the route and what you can do now is you can check the the route for errors I'm going to um, wait a minute I'm going to flight plan here in this view I'm going to reduce the zoom a little bit and then I'm going on plan here with a right click and I'm clicking through the flight plan so I can follow the flight plan and check for any weird um, routing that he uh, calculated and you can see it's very it's very uh, good here except for this uh, very steep uh, or very uh, sharp curve just before the approach so you can change things here but this takes you pretty much from A to B so I'm uh, changing to arc again and I'm going to arc of 10 nautical miles for the uh, departure and 
Well, yeah, that's about everything you can um, say for the FMC um, programming. That's it. Next thing is, of course, um, starting the engines and all that and I presume you already know that just to be com complete about that in case you don't know just switch the APU bleed on disconnect the external power that that's just plain simple just to be uh, uh, just to show you that shortly go to ignition start and you can already start the engines I'm just going to complete this so that you um, can see I'm I'm just going to finish the tutorial so you so that you can taxi. But the FMC tutorial is now um, pretty much done. Have to close the door. Switch on engine one. Okay, the stairs shouldn't be here, so let's remove them. Sorry, stairs should be removed, of course. Okay, engines are stable. Just go to normal here. Arm the ground, the ground spoilers. Go to your flap setting of two. And from this point, you can pretty much start your uh, taxi just um, enter your first cleared altitude here I'm going to presume that the first altitude is cleared altitude is 10,000 feet and click left on it so that the computer will take over the um, the the vertical navigation and you can click left here and left here that's just um, the basic version of what you have to do. So now you can start your taxi. What we'll do is we'll switch the APU bleed off as soon as the engines are running. We'll Eight switch the APU off. Bricks. Taxi lights. Beacon. No, not yet. And of course, seat belts. No smoking. Emergency lights. So don't get me wrong, I'm, I, I know that I didn't do the, all this in the right order, but I just want to get you from A to B and, and this is what we'll cover here. So I just started my taxi now, I'm going to switch the auto brakes on maximum. And now you can see that the takeoff configuration pages come alive on the upper ECAM. And um, all you have to do now with the um, auto brakes already set to max, the signs on and the cabin checked and the spoilers armed, you just have to click here on takeoff configuration and he will automatically test it. And if there's takeoff config normal, you are ready to go. So this concludes this tutorial. I hope it um, helps you. In case you have any questions, just leave a commentary below this video. And um, if you like the video, if it helped you, um, uh, pressing the like button would be very much appreciated. Until next time, I say happy landings.